You're the God of this city. You're the King of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. The greater things have yet to come. And greater. If we just bow our heads right where we are as we get ourselves ready for worship, trusting God for his move this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we gather in your house to give praise and worship to your name. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will show himself mighty as we say, Lord, take precedence in this house. Have your own way. We look to you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us this week. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. another day that the Lord has made. We are grateful. I am grateful to be in the house with you all. Good morning, good morning. Lovely to see you. And as we come together, we come with what? We come with a purpose. We come with expectation. Because we haven't just come as a routine. We go to work on a routine. You know, we go and we fulfill what we're asked to do because they're paying us. We choose to come here. And when we choose to come, we choose because we love the Lord. Amen. We choose to come because I want to see your faces. I want to be encouraged by your presence. I want to be with the family of God. And it's so amazing to be here with you today. 
and can we all stand together? I don't know if we've got any... It's not working. It's not going to help. That's going to be very un unsettling for us today. We've got blessed assurance. I have a blessed assurance. Who else has a blessed assurance? So we'll try and track the words that we can. Sorry. But if you know the song, sing with us. If you don't know, clap your hand, be engaged in the words of the songs, and let us just give lift up the give glory to God today together. As I travel.
Drums is really loud without its little covering, isn't it? <laughs> Susie, can you just hold back a little bit, please? Oh, Lord. Well played, but love, God is good. Amen. Does he hold your hand? Yes. Does he hold your hand? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I really am sorry that, oh, it looks like it might, they might be getting it working. We've got a new song today. And we don't want us to sing it, but we're going to sing it. This song talks about our foundation. One of the scriptures I have here says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the... What did he build it on? Let's all be sure about that. What did he build it on? The rock. The rain came, the streams rose, and the wind blew, and beat against the house. Yet, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. I don't want to be one of those people that builds anything on sand. Because Christ is my firm, my very solid foundation. And I know you're not going to know this one with us, but you know what? You can worship with us in this song. <coughs> Until they can get that going if they can. Be blessed by the song. Be blessed by the words.
He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. Oh no, He won't. He won't. He won't fail. Trusting. 
generation. Why would he fail now? Any evidence that he fails? Has anybody got any evidence that Jesus Christ fails? Never. He never, does not never, fail. Never, never. The second verse says, I've still got joy in chaos. How many can testify to that? In the middle of chaos, you still have joy. Hallelujah. 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 And you've got peace that makes absolutely no sense. Hallelujah. Huh? Peace that makes no, no sense, sense at all in the middle of chaos. Hallelujah. Who could that be? Hallelujah. But Jesus. Nobody else. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. The Lord, and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord and he heard and he answered. I saw the Lord.
give you glory, Lord, we give you glory. Nevertheless, God's solid rock stands firm, sealed with this inscription. The Lord knows who is his, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. It's not my words, it's the words of the Lord. Be assured today, make sure before you leave this building, that Christ is your firm foundation. There's no safer place to rest. There's no safer place to be. In the middle of whatever is happening in your life, he will give you joy in the middle of chaos. And he'll give you peace that makes no sense. No sense. Hallelujah. That's my encouragement to you today. To stand assured in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know him as your saviour, He's right there. You can give him a try. He is ready and waiting. All you have to do is try. We try so many other things in life. Why not give Jesus a try? Bless you. church. Good morning. It's hap Are you happy to be here? Yes. Good. Thank the Lord. We have got a program for you today and hope that you'll be blessed. I pray today that your hearts will be open to receive what is provided for you today. God is good. He's able. He's afforded you to be here and let's just praise his name. I am your moderator for today and um, I'm going to read the uh, verse of scripture now, taken from St. Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. The song you have just heard, Oceans, which was so beautifully sung, is, taken from, is, is based on that scripture. And I just want to remind you, um, it says, You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in ocean deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When ocean rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. Say, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. So today, I'm going to read from St. Matthew 15, like I said, verses 22 to 33. And this song is based on that scripture when Peter was walking on the water, when Jesus was walking on the water, and Peter called for, for him to join Jesus. So I'll just read here. Um, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, so he said, come. 
And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Now Jesus was walking on the water, called for Peter to join him. As long as Peter kept his mind fixed on Jesus, Jesus' command to walk on the water, he did fine. However, as soon as he took his mind off Jesus and began to consider the physical impossibility of the situation, he became afraid and began to sink. When God calls us to walk on the water in our own lives and to do those things that appear to be impossible, it is then that we must stand strong in the fact that we serve a God who does the impossible. Every follower of Jesus Christ will be called to faith stretching places in life. If we reject our fears and choose to trust Christ, he will bring about the miraculous in our lives and ministry. So I, I read this scripture because it was, so, I, I just want you to, you to know that the song that was sung here today is based on that. And it's such a wonderful song. It's one of my favorites, and I'm telling you, when I hear this song, every time, whatever I'm going through, it just helps me to stop and think that, you know, with God, everything is possible. Okay, here ends the reading of the word. Um, I won't, I'm, like I said, I'm your moderator for today, and I'll come back to you in a little while, but at this point, I'll ask the PR team to come and do the welcome and the announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Oops. I'm sorry. Welcome, 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 House of Bread. I'd first like to um, welcome the Holy Spirit. Um, welcome those on social media, uh, Pastor Perkins and Pastor Pasida Langley Perkins and the ministers and all you wonderful saints. Um, I have some announcements today. Also want to, before I go on to the announcements, want to welcome any visitors. Um, we have Sonia Douglas visiting from Jamaica. Will you stand? We won't ask you to do anything. Bless you. Welcome. I hope you are blessed today by this service. And there is a there is a few more. Is there a Jacqueline Douglas? Stand, Jacqueline. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the House of Bread. Um, we also there is Elisa. Elisa is visiting. Is Elisa here? Hello. Welcome, Elisa. Uh, Jayla, we have a Jayla visiting with us today. Is Jayla here? Don't be shy. We won't ask you to do anything. We just want to welcome you, give you a warm welcome. If not, that's okay, that's okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And also, Ronke. Where's Ronke? Stand Ronke. Okay. Bless you. Welcome. Come on, we can do a little bit more than that. Let's well, really welcome our visitors. And for anybody visiting, if it's their first, second, third time, you know, welcome to you. I hope you are blessed. You know, this is a house where, ev where every soul matters, yeah? Your, ma your soul matters to God, yeah? And um, we would also like to welcome Kelly and Kindra. They were away, so welcome back to the House of Bread. Yes. And is there anybody else who didn't, wasn't able to fill in a card? 
welcome, welcome everybody. God bless you all. God bless you. This is the first announcement. So on the 1st of May, there is going to be, uh, sorry, the Church of God of Prophecy Men's Summit. That's going to be in November, but the deposit is due on the 1st of May. Okay, so please take note, those of you who want to attend the Church of God of Prophecy Men's Summit for November. Uh, House of Bread Women's Ministry Team, on the 26th of April at 7.30, there will be a social night out, and it's going to be bowling and dinner at Hollywood Bowling and Jimmy's Restaurant. It's £8.50 for bowling and £25 for dinner. And just a reminder, there's no parking, okay? So give your name to um, any of the women ministry leaders by Sunday the 21st, which is today, yeah? So if you're interested in doing a little bit of bowling and eating some nice food later on, then if you can um, contact one of the ministry leaders, women, women's ministry leaders. Um, on Saturday the 4th of May, there will be a prayer breakfast with the Church of God of Prophecy Region South Women's Ministry. And this will be hosted by Joan Rowe, and that will be £10 per person. If you're interested, um, make known to House of Bread. Um, it's going to start at 9.30 a.m. Okay. Um, there's going to be also line dancing on the 1st of May at Kitter Road, time 6 p.m. till 7 p.m. Um, I've heard it's wonderful. If you want to try and get fit and, you know, keep moving, you know, <laughs> it's all about keeping fit as well nowadays. Yeah, we look after our soul, We've got to look after the physical. <laughs> Amen. So that's Wednesday, the 1st of May, 6 p.m. till 7 p.m. On Saturday the 11th of May, between 9.30 and 11.30, there will be the Big Brekkie, Big Breakfast, at House of Bread, which is here. Uh, you will have a free English breakfast, so, but any donations are welcome. Okay, so you keep that for your diary. Okay. I'm just going down the list. Right, on the Saturday the 25th of May, between 9.30 and 4.35, there will be a mental wellness workshop. And this is a workshop to promote mental wellness. Um, this, will be kept, this will be held at Kenda Primary School, which is in New Cross. The fees are 50 pounds, and um, you can check out www.eventbrite.co.uk for more information, okay? Um, May the 21st to the 26th, a reminder, it is the National Ladies Retreat. The cost is uh, single, £310 per person, and twin, £270 per person. And there are, you can book at www.churchofgodofprophecy.org.uk, and you can also email the um, women's ministry. Um, on... Okay, there isn't a date here, but there will be the 70th Convocation Choir fundraising pledge. Um, we're asking if anyone could pledge 20 pounds. It's, it's, it's a campaign to pledge for fundraising. And you can visit uh, cogop.org.uk to pledge uh, a 20 pound, if you're able to, God bless. Um, all weekly activities remain the same. So remember that there is prayer every afternoon at 1 p.m. and on Monday evenings at 8 p.m. there is also a Bible study. Is it pray prayer? Prayer, sorry, prayer. So Thursdays is Bible study. Thank you for that reminder. And now we're going to go on to the birthdays. So we have Doreen Wallace. Her birthday, she will be celebrating today. Is Doreen here? No? Okay. Doreen is celebrating her 20th, uh, 
celebrating her birthday today, which is the 21st. And we also have Gilda Roberts. Is Gilda here? No, no Gilda? Gilda will be celebrating on the 23rd of April. And we also have our mother, Mother Winifred Grant. She will be celebrating on the 24th of April. Please remember to send your birthday wishes to us. You know, she's a mother of the house. She's been here from the beginning, you know, and she's a mother. So let's, you know, a phone call, a little text message. Bless. And um, Sophia Leonde is celebrating on the 25th of April. So Sonia's not here. Sophia's not here? She's not here today. Okay. But let's remember to say happy birthday to all these people that were mentioned today. Um, we also have an anniversary. Wow. Brother and sister Arison are celebrating 24 years of marriage. May you stand, stand. Come on, let's clap. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Sister and brother Arison, can you come to the front, please? <laughs> Cheer them along as they come. <laughs> oh, did they look wonderful? Okay. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Let, let the congregation see your beautiful faces. <laughs> On behalf of the House of Bread, we've just got to give you this token, this card, and for celebrating your 24th year of marriage. And we pray that you live to see many, many more, but not just many, many more, but many more blessed years ahead. God bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Cheer them as they go along. Yes. 24 years. That's amazing. Amazing. And there will be refreshments at the end of church. Okay? So come together and, you know, let's fellowship together. And I hope you enjoy the service. This is a blessed house. I know this is a blessed house of God. I, it's, it's amazing. I am so just honored just to be a part of this church, you know. Uh, many of you may not know, but I was actually raised here. Then the kind of like over the years moved on somewhere else and then God brought me back and I'm happy to be here. So God bless you all. Wow. Well, um, good morning, church. Still morning? Yes, just about, I suppose. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. I just want to take a few um, moments of your time. I know there is a program, but I just wanted to um, give a vote of thanks. Um, God has been absolutely amazing, and it will be very reminiscent of me not to thank God's people for their help and support. Um, during this week, we had the uh, Watoto um, children's choir here at the House of Bread and it was fantastic. It was amazing. It was great. There was a, a soul that was saved um, uh, during the um, production and it was just amazing and we give God thanks for that. Do we not give God thanks for that? You're just the one soul that came and they gave their life to the Lord Jesus and that's what it's about. So, um, you know, when you don't know what to do or you don't know how to do certain things, if you just, you know, listen to God and follow what he says, he always brings the help. I'm telling you, when God is in it, he brings the help for you. So first and foremost, I just want to give thanks to our senior pastor Cleveland and co-pastor Pasida Langley, um, Langley Perkins for their immense support from the moment that this um, Watoto group was um, going to be coming over from the 
get-go, they were on board and they supported me, they encouraged me, and they just, you know, was there all the way through. And I give you thanks for that, and I thank God for what you have done. Also, Brother Silburn, he was here at the crack of dawn, really, <laughs> to meet the van people, and he was helping them to bring things in. And when I saw Silbert carrying stuff in, I thought, wow, this man little but his talawa, because he was carrying a lot of stuff. But I thank God for him. Sister Yonet, she cooked the meal for all the children, the Watoto and everybody, and she cooked it with love. She cooked it as if she was cooking for her own family, and everybody enjoyed it. Sister Chloe, her daughter, was fantastic. And you know, it's the first time I've really spoken with Chloe. We were washing up together and everything, and the time just flew by. And no one asked her to do it. She just came and did it, and I thank God for her. Brother Bunny and Brother Jason, they were here doing the media stuff, working with the Watoto people, and I give thanks to them for what they were doing. The hospitality team, Sister L, Marva, and Sister Kashan, they came and helped with the refreshments downstairs. The evangelism team, Sister Jadine and Sister Reflo, wow, they were here, they did um, packs to give to people who um, were coming through the doors, giving them information about our church, and that was amazing. And you know the jingle that you have all got on the um, group um, when it was talking about the Watoto? It was Sister Judine's um, family member that put that together, and I thought it was fantastic, it was marvelous. So I thank you for that, and I thank your relative for doing that for us. Brother Denroy, now, this brother, he came, and he was here in the night, and he took the children to the host family's homes. Then he came back the next morning, and he brought them back to the house. He transported them, and I thank God for his time that he spent to do that. You know, hold on, hold on. Let me let me call them all, and we can just appreciate them. And Sister Valerie, she helped me to um, count up the gathering of what we got that that night. And uh, Sister Cindy, wow. All I can say is, you know, when you see Cindy doing what she's doing here, you know, you just see her doing it. But when Cindy put her shoulders to the plow or whatever it is, she helped me so much. Her planning, that woman, she's got it, you know, to the precision. She helped with the planning. She gave me her experience. Uh, you know, she does events and stuff. Her suggestions, her you know, she just blessed me that day. And I thank her so much for what she's doing. I know she don't particularly like all of that, but I'm going to thank you because you need to be thanked for what you did. So I just want to also highlight or acknowledge all the families in this house who gave up their, you know, their time, their home, their heart, they opened their heart to the Watto children, and they didn't regret it. If you saw the feedback that I got from them, it was fantastic. They were blessed. So I just want to um, thank Sister Reflo, Sister Marcel, Sister Nakisha, uh, Sister Amy, Sister Valita, Sister Janet, uh, Pastor, Pastor Perkins, um, and Reverend Kimoy from the Triumph Church International. They all opened their doors and their hearts and they welcomed the Watoto people into their homes. And I thank God for that. It was a wonderful, wonderful, I did it too as well, experience to have them there. And I would say, when we go down for refreshments, if you get a moment, just talk to them and find out how they found it. It was a blessing. They wanted longer days with them. They were thinking one day or one night wasn't enough. The true. <laughs> so, you know, I would say that if, if you ever get an opportunity like this, take it on. So their theme was better days. Hope, you know, um, uh, there is a hope. I would say that the donations that was um, collected that night and the sponsorships that they got, all of your donations and everybody who came and supported it and gave donations, you enabled them to have better days and you also enable them to have a hope and a future so i thank you so very much for everything that you've done god bless you thank you thank you well done sister brenda and to everyone who assisted god bless you and will continue to do so Okay, at this time we will be having our offering. So we're going to need um, the worship team. So if you could prepare your envelopes, please, and just you'll be instructed by the ushers.
Thank you. Thank you, worship team. You get out your way. Sorry. <laughs> get your offerings ready. We're going to raise a hallelujah. In the presence of our enemies, louder than the unbelief, but our weapon is our melody. Stand with us while you're getting your offerings ready and worship with us. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven come. 
raise a hallelujah. Shall we raise a hallelujah? hallelujah. And another one. Hallelujah. Yes, give God another praise. Hallelujah. We thank God for his goodness. We thank him for his mercy. You know, one songwriter said, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. His mercies begin afresh every morning. His compassion never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. So let's just continue to give him the honor and praise he deserves. One more time. Praise God for his goodness and for his mercy. His mercy endures forever. We bless the Lord. Thank you. Okay, so I have three items on my program from three individuals. So just bear with us. They won't be long. But it's important that we get our bridging involved in our service. Okay? So the first, I'm going to ask Brother Albert to come and give a testimony, whether in song. However, he pray, he, 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 he's ready. Thank you, Brother Albert. Come on. You can come up. Bless the Lord. Can we give him a chair? Yeah, to my pastors, ministers, visiting friends, all the members, those on social media, all the children, I must say greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I don't really... I just want to sing a song. Yeah? I am under the rock, and the rock is higher than I. Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. Go tell my enemy, I'm under the rock. Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. Oh, I am under the rock. And the rock is higher than I. Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. Go tell my enemy. I am under the rock. Jehovah, hide me. I am under the rock. Jesus' name so sweet. Emmanuel name so sweet. Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel name so sweet. Every rock me rock up on Jesus. Jesus name so sweet. Every rock me rock up on Jesus. Jesus name so sweet. Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel name so sweet. Jesus name so sweet, Emmanuel name so sweet, and every rock me rock up on Jesus. Jesus name so sweet, every rock me rock up on Jesus. Jesus name so sweet. Ah, hallelujah, glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Amen. things are possible. When I asked Brother Albert, he didn't know he could. But clearly, he can. So for all of us who think we can't, we just need to try because what we can do, look how amazing that has been. Well done, Brother Albert, and thank you very much. Thank you. 
Bless the Lord. So we just keep encouraging each other. You know, just let everybody know. We all have talents. And yes, some of us can be very nervous. Okay? But if you just give it a go, you'd be surprised what you can do. At this time, we'll have Brother Menzi with a poem. Chair him as he comes, brethren. Thank you. Thanks, love. Okay. Greetings, everybody. Um, my wife said to me, will you do something? And my immediate response was no. <laughs> but like everything else, although I say no, I'm in the background scene, what can I do? And I came across this poem by Helen Rice, an American, born um, May 19, 19th of May 1900 to 23rd of April 1981. And the poem is entitled, This Too Shall Pass. If I can endure for this minute, whatever is happening to me, no matter how heavy my heart is or how dark the moment may be, if I can remain calm and quiet with all the world crashing about me, secure in the knowledge God loves me when everyone else seems to doubt me, if I can but keep on believing what I know in my heart to be true, that darkness will fade with the morning and that this will pass away too, then nothing in life can defeat me. For as long as this knowledge remains, I can suffer whatever is happening. For I know God will break all the chains that are binding me tight in the darkness and trying to fill me with fear. For there is no night without dawning, and I know that my morning is near. Thank you. Bless the Lord. This too shall pass. We give God thanks. Thank you, Brother Menzi. Yes, so let's just keep encouraging each other. I'll give him another chair, please, Bridget. Thank you. Thank you. And our, our, our last item will be from Sister Chambers. Sister Chambers, do you want me to bring the mic? Can you manage to come up or are you able? Good. Thank you. Chair, as she comes, Bridget. sing this little song. I would have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. I would feel his presence near me, and his heart
as best as we he can wish her words of comfort that no song what a beautiful song I must have the Savior with me for I dare not walk alone I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown then my soul will fear no evil let he leads me where he will I will go without a murmur and his footsteps follow still Thank you so much, Sister Chambers. That's beautiful. And I pray that you'll be blessed by the words of this song. It's beautiful. It's one of the old time ones. Those were the days when we sang those songs. Amen. I've just got one correction before I move on. Um, I've been asked to correct the date for the women's retreat. It's on the 24th to the 26th of May. I think there was some mis miscommunication about the date. So 24 to 26 of May. So please bear that in mind, okay? Thank you. Right. I'm, I, I can't remember if I did tell you who I was, though for those who don't know who I am. But I am Mavis McInnes, and I said, like I said before, I'm your, the moderator for today, as you know, but I wasn't sure whether 
those who don't know my name. So for those who didn't, I'm Mavis McInnes, okay? So I must apologize if I missed that at the beginning. And I don't think I did greet my pastors and the brethren properly. So, so, so um, greetings to my pastors, Pastor Cleveland and Pastor Langley Perkins, okay? It happens, you know, when, when, you're, when you're not used to coming up here and stand up, you do miss things. But I do hope it hasn't impacted on the, our service so far, okay? Right, so I think we are ready now for the word. Are we ready for the word? Yes. yes. And our theme for this month is time for a change. And don't worry, I'm not the preacher for today. But I'd just like to say, um, change can be defined as something which is unavoidable. The word change means to alter, to vary, to modify, to make or become different. And I know we have all experienced change at some point or the other. To change makes either, makes either an essential difference, which often amounts to a loss of an, of an original identity, or sub substituting one thing for another. And I know we have all experienced change, and sometimes, although change may be good, it can be, you know, it makes us fearful. When, you know, um, I'm trying to find the word, but I can't. But anyway, it makes us uncomfortably even. Because sometimes we um, go through these changes that we have to make, but we are not comfortable with it. I remember moving from a house that I was at for 11 years. And um, when we moved to our permanent residence where we are now, although the house before was not, as ideal as you would have liked. But when we moved, it was such a change that you do miss some of the things from the old house. And I know that a lot of us go through changes. Even coming from Jamaica to live here, it was very uncomfortable to me. Like once I got, I was excited to come, but once I got here, it was a different type of lifestyle, you know? So I'm just saying that to say, although it's good, it can be bad until you get used to your change of circumstance. Um, it does take us out of our comfort zone. Therefore, sometimes we are afraid to take that plunge. But I'd just like to say today, the Bible says that change is unavoidable for humans, but God is unchanging. And God's attributes and goals are always the same. But his methods of dealing with humans have evolved with time. So if we look back at the scripture which was read about Peter, Peter experienced a great change as soon as he took his mind off Jesus and began to consider the physical impossibilities of the situation. He became afraid and began to sink. But once he kept his eyes on Jesus, things changed. So I like I said, I'm going to let the preacher do his job, but I just wanted to say that bit. So I pray that your hearts and minds will be open to receive the word, and God bless you as you do so. Pastor Cleve? Yeah. I just want to say a word of prayer for you, sir. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for how far we have got to in our service. And as the preacher is about to deliver the word, I pray, my God, our hearts will be open to receive your word. And I pray that as he has prepared himself, Lord, that he will be a blessing today and we shall receive from you what he has prepared and what you have offered up for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Please receive Pastor Cleveland. Thank you. Amen. Can we give God another shout of praise? Come on. He deserves a shout of praise. Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Just take a minute and just say thank you, Jesus. Take a minute. Take a minute and say thank you, Lord. 
Thank him for what he's done for you this week. Thank him for his loving kindness. Thank you, Lord. Who is like unto our God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for giving to me what I don't deserve. Amen. Thank you for touching my body. Thank you for healing and keeping me in my right mind. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you for your provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God thanks for who he is. They say that we don't worship God. The word worship comes from um, the Latin. They, when they divide that word etymologically, as they would put it, is that it means worth-ship. So you give worth to God. You give him all the worth that he deserves. And so we adore him. And they say we worship him and give worth to him, not because of what he has given to us alone, but more so because of who he is. Amen? There are some people who just depend on the hand of God. And they will only give thanks and they will only worship when God gives them something. But a true worshiper is one who worships God. When they are in the valley, when the fire is seven times hotter, my God, even if you don't get anything, you know that God is faithful. You know that God is omnipotent. So you worship him because of who he is. Even if I am still in the valley, even if the lions surround me, I give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands and give worth. Give worth to the Almighty. I don't know what you're going through at work or what is happening on the job or what's happening in the home or what's happening in the marriage. Lift your hands. Stand to your feet. Oh God, and give him praise and glory and honor and dominion and power for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Now that you understand that we don't just worship God for what he has given to us, I want you to take a minute now and I want you to shabak, shabak, throw your hands back, throw your head back, lift your voice and tell him who he is, tell him who he is, tell him who he is. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. We thank you. And you have to understand that worship does not just benefit God. But when we worship him, somebody says, as we lift him up and as we magnify him, he becomes large in your space. As you magnify him with your praise, the psalmist says he inhabits the praises of his people. So when you want God in your circumstance, if you are in the valley or your place among dens of lions, you just begin to praise him and lift him up and he will come and inhabit the praises. I just feel to rest on this worship for a moment. Let me tell you about Paul and Silas. With Peter, they put Peter in prison. But they realized that an angel took out Peter out of prison. So this time when they locked up 
Paul and Silas. They said we're not just going to put him in the normal ordinary prison. They said the scripture says that they put them in the dungeon. This time they didn't just leave Paul and Silas free. They shackled them to the floor. Hands and feet were shackled to the floor. And they put them in the innermost prison. But can I tell you, when a worshiper gets into hell, I don't care where you are. I don't care how dark it gets. I don't care what prison they put you in. I don't care what the managers and the co-workers are doing to you. If you understand the power of worship and praise to the Almighty God, Paul and Silas, though they were shackled and put in the innermost prison, they understand the power of praise. They begin to lift their hands. They clap their hands. They begin to shout hallelujah and they begin to repeat the psalms and rehearse the songs and as they praise God the scripture says that there was a shaking because God began to inhabit the praises of his people and as the prison was shaking the shackles fell off their feet and off their hands and they walked out somebody's about to walk out today because you understand the power of praise and worship come on church of god stand to your feet lift your hands clap your hands and shout a shout of praise to the almighty god hey Hey Lord, somebody's coming out. Somebody's coming out. Somebody's walking out of their prison. Somebody's walking out of a mental prison. Somebody's walking out of a spiritual prison. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. Come on, tell him who he is. A worshiper don't wait for people to tell you to worship him. When I say praise the Lord, it's a command that you just spontaneously begin to tell God who he is. Come on, tell him who he is to you. He is my healer. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When I read Psalm 18, Psalm 18 give you an indication of who God is, the level to which he will operate on your behalf. The scripture says after the psalm is recognized that the snares of hell had encompassed him, surrounded him. He cried to the Lord, the psalmist says. And then God heard his voice. And verse 9 says, And God bowed the heavens and came down, and darkness was about and under his feet. Can I tell you what that means? It meant that even though the psalmist was in darkness, God camouflage himself in darkness so when the enemy would have thought that you have no help 
and you have no one to advocate for you and to support you and when they see another person beside you but they realize that darkness cover them the scripture says the holy God of heaven unveil his light when the enemy thought that he would have captured you destroyed you cause you to lose your mind and cause you to go mental hear me today God camouflage himself in darkness and then unveil his light and his power and though the enemy comes in one way he shall flee seven ways and though a thousand shall fall at your side ten thousand shall fall at your right hand but it shall not come nigh thee oh even with your eyes you shall behold the reward of the wicked give him praise and glory in this house Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I take this time to say thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our honor. You're worthy of dominion and power. We magnify you, Lord, for you are our refuge and our strength you are a very present help in the time of trouble you are our hiding place you are god all by yourself and there is none like unto you you are omnipotent because you are all powerful you are omniscient because you know all things Nothing is hidden from you. You are God and God alone. We magnify you and we worship you and we give you all the praise, the dominion and power. And the church say, Amen, Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank the Lord. Our theme this month declares it's time for a change. And if ever a time that we need to come to a point that we are change is now. And when I speak of change, sometimes we cry out for the change of our circumstances and what we are going through. And of course, I need my fire to change, to be quenched. Of course, if um, things are happening on the job or in the home, I want something to change. I want a change. But I have come to understand that true change really comes when we ourselves are changed. Because what happens is that Though the circumstances might still exist, if I am changed, then I can change my circumstance. Because I don't know if you understood the scriptures that says there is life and death in the power of the tongue. It means that whatever your mouth say as a child of God, it will happen. For you speak those things which are not as if they are. Can I talk to children of God who has the Holy Spirit dwelling in you? So if we are changed, we can change things around us. Hear what the scripture says. The scripture says, if you say to this mountain... I like Jesus. I like the word. Because he didn't say go get a sledgehammer or get some bulldozer to bulldoze this mountain down. He simply says if you say, if you just use this tongue and say to the mountain, be thou cast into the midst of the sea, it will be cast into the midst of the sea. It then indicates to us that our words have power. Your words have power. 
power to change your circumstance. My God Almighty, when you get down on your knees, you speak and utter those things that you want to see happen. Speak them into being. Can I tell you that I'm not talking as one that don't believe in the scriptures. I spoke to you sometime in September about my work situation and how the supervisor was trying to have me, if you will, try to buffet me. I brought it to the prior team and we prayed as a family. And I speak those things, the scripture that God gave me as I fasted and prayed over the situation was Psalm 37. And God said, split the page in two. And what you do, you look at Psalm 37 and see what you are to do in this circumstance and what my outcome will be. And so when I look at the scripture, I said, do good and he will delight thyself and he will bring it to pass. So I said, okay, God, as much as this woman would want me to hate on her, I am going to delight myself. Because that's my responsibility. And your responsibility, God, is to bring my vision and my desire to pass. It says, do good. That's my responsibility. And as I begin to pray and ask God, to deal with the matter. In two months, not that I prayed for her to die or to be sick, but in two months, she was sick and off for three months. She had never taken a day off, hardly, before. Three months off. I said, God, I didn't ask for it, but I leave all things to you. She came back. Then fire started under her tail, from management and just last week she came and reported to us I'm leaving this job I am trying to show you that you have power to speak those things which are not into being there is power in your words to change. So I want you now to declare, I need to change. I need a change. It's time for a change. When we declare that term, it's time for a change, it could mean that somebody gets fed up. Fed up with life and what life is bringing to you. That you said enough is enough. It's time for a change. And so if you feel like you're in that place. It's okay as well to declare God. It's time for a change. The psalmist cried out. God, it's time for a change. Do not let my enemies triumph over me. It's time for a change. But it's also time for us to change. Can I tell you that sometimes when we ask for change, for God to change us, some of us may uh, confuse the terminologies of transformation and behavior modification. For when someone is transformed, it means that they are metamorphosized, the Greek term for transformation, meaning that there is a complete change from the inside out, a totally different person. So the scripture says, I beseech you therefore what? Brethren, by the mercies of God, help me Bible scholars, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye metamorphosized, be ye transformed from the inside out. Meaning that there is a change in character and a change in integrity. You stand 
and agree with God what God says he will do. You agree with the word of God. Character is changed. Character is built. That's what transformation speaks to. You, whatever happens and change that happens on the inside will manifest itself on the outside. But can I tell you about behavior modification? For when I was doing psychology at college and they talked to us about behavior modification in the classroom, you can talk to someone or talk to students or talk to adults about the expectation of how you behave in church or in the public and they modify and change their behavior for the circumstance or for the forum that they are in. So you will find that people will behave churchify when they are in church. They will dress the part and talk the part and they will speak holy and speak the scriptures even to to put a dagger in your heart because they just keep talking scriptures. Have you ever had a bereavement and people come to you using the scriptures and you feel like somebody has throw, thrown a stone at you? The scriptures being used incorrectly. But sometimes, so these people who modify their behavior for where they are, you will find that politicians will modify their behavior while they are in certain forum. But when you catch them off camera, and when you catch them off uh, the, the, the radio show, you will hear all sorts. I think it was the French president who caught, I can't remember which, was it, um, not Boris Johnson. It was uh, uh, Gordon, it, Gordon Brown, Gordon Brown. And he said something about while he was there shaking and modifying his behavior with the French president, he made a, a terrible remark about the French cuisine. I don't know if you remember, and it got, he didn't realize the microphone was still on. And the media made a, a mockery of it. So people will modify their behavior. But when you are transformed from the inside, Sister Arlene, if I'm in church, I have integrity. If I am in the workplace, I conduct business with integrity and with purity and with holiness. If I am in church, I will speak holy, but when I am at home and my husband and the children get on top of my nerve, I will sp still speak right because I'm transformed from the inside. So change, transformation is that kind of change that we ask for. I want us to just raise our hand and say, Lord, transform me. Transformation and change is the act or process through which something becomes different. So let me turn my attention to the scripture passes from St. John 5 that I will be focusing on in the next few minutes. St. John 5, verse 1 to 11, 1 to 15. It says, and this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there, at, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole 
of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him, When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed. And walk, and immediately the man was whole, and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore saw him, said unto him, that was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. And then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was wist not who it was. For Jesus had conveyed himself away, and multi a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that what it was, that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And we bless the Lord for the reading of his word. The pool of Bethsaida, you need to understand, was in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate. And the Sheep Gate, uh, from my research and my understanding, was where they would, um, it's a place where they would wash the sheep. But this was not exactly in the temple. This was on the outside. Which places it north of the temple. It says, John gives the additional detail that the pool was surrounded by five porches. So these porches were like coverings. So as these deceased or diseased people and infirmed people would come at this pool, as the water would be troubled, they would congregate in these five porches waiting for the troubling of the water so that the first person that steppeth in would be made whole from their illness. So the pool of Bethsaida lay outside the city walls. It was at this pool that Jesus performed this miracle for this man that we speak of here. Now, the name of the pool, Bethsaida, is uh, in the Hebrew tongue, means house of mercy. And a great number of disabled people would congregate there, as I said earlier. Now, you need to understand, as I look at the scripture, I am saying, how is it that you have so many infirmed people, people who are in need at the pool of Bethsaida, which means the house of mercy, a place where mercy should be administered, but people are there as if they are miserable. But I come to understand that when even like the church is a mixture, all sorts come into the church. We have people who are infirmed in their spirit, some who are sick spiritually, some who are depressed, some who are sick physically, some who have mental illness. This house is a house of mercy and we welcome everyone. Every soul matters in this house. 
And so even though it's a house of mercy, we do not intend for the sickness and the depression to last. We welcome you in, but we serve a God who is greater than our infirmity. We serve a God, the scripture says, who cannot be, who can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. We have a God who is compassionate. So irrespective pastor and the cell group leader may not know your situation. I may not know what you're going through on the job or what you're going through with your children or what's happening in your household. I may not have a clue. But can I tell you that there is a God who is omniscient who knows all things and he sees all things. Can I tell you about Hagar who thought who was banished from her house. She gave up her very body to a man called Abraham and at the end of Abraham using her body he banished her from the house. Left her a, a um, stranded with a child. The scripture says that Agar went by the well to hide herself and while she was crying by the well thinking that nobody understands even the man who I gave myself to do not understand my situation. I am used, I'm abused and now I'm discarded of. But when she thought that nobody would have seen her in the desert place and as she wept by the well the scripture says an angel of the Lord do you know that angels visit deserts because angels, God, angels are at the command of the Almighty. And angels, God will give his angels charge over his children. I don't care where you have gone and whether you're hiding behind a well or whether pastor know your problem or your situation. I come to tell you that God knows everything and he sees everything right where you are in your seat among this group of people you may think that you're hiding but God sees you he knows the nitty gritty of what you're going through he knows what you're thinking he knows the distress that you're under he knows that before you left out this morning how distressed and how depressed you were and he sees you he is a God that seeth from afar. He sits high, but he looks low. He can see your circumstance. Hagar was behind the well crying, and God saw her. So Hagar declared that well when the angel appeared to her and said, woman get up and go back home for God is going to make your child become a child of plenty even though he shall be a man of war he shall receive his own blessing she was blessed her son was blessed because God saw her she then got up and she declared that well my God Jehovah oh my God Raha the God who sees somebody just need to rest your hands on your head and declare that place declare your house God sees God sees Jehovah Ra God sees God sees God sees he's ready to change circumstance. So here was this pool of Bethsaida, a place of mercy, which caused all the impotent people to come around. It is called the, 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 the pool of Bethsaida and impotent folk, people who have no strength and have no might to do anything for themselves. You had the withered, you have the blind, you have those who could not help themselves to 
plunge themselves into the water. But as this man sat by the pool, he was like that and in that state for 38 years. How long have you been going through what you're going through? And you think, I, this is my portion. This is life. I have maybe attempted to take my life. I have contemplated committing suicide because of the, the, the extent to which this thing is going on too long. But I come to declare to you, it is time for a change. Come on, lift your hands and declare it. It is time for a change. Enough is enough. I want a group of people who are militant enough to say it must change today. My deliverance must come today. For my redeemer liveth. So here, this man in this circumstance for 38 years may be accepted. I hear little Rian, young Rian said last week, she said some people in her college just accept their portion because they are on the mental health or they are on the special needs register. They just accept themselves, oh, I'm depressed. So they are taking these medications and they go to therapy and so on. They just accept it. They're telling everybody that they are depressed and going around that I'm on um, medication uh, um, for my mental health situation. I'm ang anxious. I'm, I have panic attack. They just accept it. Some people have gone to the point that they have accepted their circumstance as it is. Because they don't know anything different. That's what life has presented to them. But hear me today. When you think that no one sees God sees. As this man stood and waited at the pool of Bethsaida, maybe in his 10th year, in his 11th year, the 20th year, the 30th year, nothing happened. But here, after 38 years, came a stranger who showed up. A stranger who came to him, seen him in his paralytic, impotent state, having no power to help himself, maybe watching him dragging himself towards the pool to plunge himself in, but then somebody came in and used syrup and get in before. But this stranger came to him and asked him a question. Wilt thou be made whole? For me, that seems silly, a question to ask, Manny. How can you see me barely dragging my feet? You saw and you see the state I am in. And you're asking me, wilt thou be made whole? What Jesus was asking him is that do you have the will to be made whole and I come to ask you today irrespective of whether your circumstance have prevailed for a very long time I am asking the self same question that that stranger asked that impotent man do you have the will to become well do you have the will to have your circumstance change? Do you have the will? All it requires is a desire. Somebody need the desire. You know what the scripture tells me? That God works on the good desires of your heart. Do you have a desire for your life, Shante? Do you have a vision, Barbara, for your life? Do you have a vision for your church? Do you have a desire for your house? Do you have a desire for your marriage? Do you have a desire for your, your, your finances? If you have a desire... God works upon the good desires of our hearts. My question to you today, will you be made whole? Hear me. I noticed that Jesus didn't even ask him whether he wants to be well from his paralytic stage. I wondered why did Jesus say, would you want to be made whole? Whole? 
All I need is my legs to receive strength. Jesus didn't say, did you want your legs to be strengthened? He said, do you want to be made whole? Can I talk to you that Jesus knows more than you're going through or more than you let off and share with your, your husband or with your wife or with the cell group leader or with your friend? Jesus knows more. He knows that you need more than just healing from a heart arthritis in the knee. He knows that you need to be completely whole. Is there anybody in this house that needs to be completely whole? So Jesus has the power. What Jesus was saying is that I have the power to make your paralytic stage become complete and healed but I also have the power to heal you spiritually. I have the power to heal you mentally. I have the power to heal you emotionally. I have the power to heal you psychologically. Wherever you are, he can make you completely whole. He is a God of not just enough. He is a God of more than enough. Somebody need to give him praise and glory in this house. Hallelujah. For this man thought, as I wrap this up in three minutes, this man thought that he had gotten away. Because sometimes we mistaken the grace of God. Because the grace of God means that God gives to us what we don't deserve. Don't think because you are the woman's leader or the men's leader or the pastor, you have a right to God's grace. Out of this church you're messed up your thoughts are messed up so if God was to treat you and give to you what you deserve you would be six feet under but the grace of God says I will give you what you don't deserve sometimes we mistaken the grace of God to a Lord us in our sin and in our state of mess. When God blesses you and pours rain on the just and the unjust, it's not an applaud for you to continue in your state of sin. This man got his healing. He was on his way rejoicing. The, the, the religious leaders asked him, what? How did you be made whole on the Sabbath? He said, all I know, the man that healed me, tell me to carry my bed and walk with it. Because in those days, you, wouldn't, you shouldn't even lift any burden on the Sabbath day. They wouldn't even allow you to look in the mirror on the Sabbath day, lest you see a gray hair and you pluck it out. Because that would be considered work. They wouldn't even allow you... They, I understand in my research, I don't know how true it is, but they said in those days, you couldn't even take out your false teeth. But hear me, irrespective of what happened, this man may have thought that he got away with the fact that he was healed, but when he went away, Jesus met up with him later on. And in the temple, he went now to the temple to worship on, in the same mess. Some of us, we party last night. Some kind of dancing that we put down and reveling that we put down. And the amount of drink that we took in to the point of intoxication. And this morning we would come and approach the platform and the altar of God and we sing song. This man got his healing and went to the temple. But when he went to the temple, Jesus showed up. And Jesus said to the man, whilst you are made to be healed and now you can walk, check your spiritual state. You are still in sin. He says, go now and sin no more. 
Go now and sin no more. Sometimes you need to understand, whilst it is, I'm not saying that every situation that happens to you is because of your sin. But what I'm saying is there are some things that happens to us because of the choices we make in life. Wrong choices, wrong things that we have made the decision, wrong decisions, decisions that does not go in the will of God. But God is saying, I have made you whole. I have administered my grace to you. So now go and sin no more. Your change, you can sustain your change when you follow the will of God. As we stand to our feet, I want to say to you today that it is time for your change. And your change is now. You have the power to speak your change into being. You have to also get militant to the point that you say to yourself, enough is enough. I need the change now. Worship team, take your place. I need the change now. I need to be made whole now. I need my house to be made whole. God, here I am. Change me first. Change me. Can we just raise your right hand and say, Lord, change me. Change me. Cause me to walk according to your will, Lord. I need this change spiritually. I cannot live this sinful life any longer. For this sinful life and the choices that I'm making, the consequences are too great. It is the choices that contravenes the will of God is causing me to mess up my family. The choices that I am making which does not go in line with the will of God is causing me to mess up my house. I need a change. Start by changing me first. Hallelujah. Change me Lord. I can't carry on any longer. Not another day. I need the change now. I need that change now. I need that change now. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Live a life at, outside of church and another life inside of church. I am going to change now. Yes, Lord. Sing. to ask if you are in this house 
and you want that change now, just raise your hand right where you are. You want that change now. Raise your hand. Yes. You want God to change your circumstance, change your life. Just raise your hand right where you are. Thank you, Lord. This situation will not prevail any longer. My God. Declare the well El Rohai, Jehovah Rohai. He sees, he sees, he sees. Sister Veronica, will you come and do this prayer as we close? Those who need that change, just keep that hand up. Just keep that hand up. If you need that change, just keep the hand up as God sees you. Thank you, Father. Yeboko shanda daba hori anda daba ha. Oh, this. Thank you, Brother Menzi, for that poem. This too will pass. Amen. Oh, more. Do you believe that? He's more than. Somebody's just catching that vision. He's more than. Prophesy that over the people today. Oh, hallelujah. One more time. Somebody needs to catch that. Ministry team, come on. Prophesy. Hey, Prophesy. Prophesy. He is more than enough. Come on. Prophesy. He's more. One more time. Glory to God. Somebody's just catching that. They're just catching it. Thank you, Lord. Let your breath, let your breath, let your breath breathe life into your people. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. Touch your daughter with fire. Touch your daughter with fire that as she speaks. She will prophesy change over your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we pray, just pray to God, even though I'm going to pray. But pray for yourself, for that change in our lives today. That God will intervene and change our surroundings. 
Father, in the name of Jesus. We come another time, Lord. Father, you are not tired of us, Lord. God, you say that we should call and you will answer. You will show us great and mighty things that we do not know. Father God, you seize us. You know us today, Father, as you see Agar. Lord, you are God today. So we thank you for the word today. And Lord, as the word go forth, Lord, that we will bind it in our hearts. Bind it upon the table of our heart, God. That we will always have the word, God, to keep us. Lord, when we are in the valley, Lord, we can draw for the word. Father, we thank you today. And Lord, here is your people before you today, God. Lord, that need deliverance, Lord. I pray right now, Jesus, that you will lay your mighty hands upon your people today, God. Lord, we need a change, Father God. The man at the pool of Bethesda, Lord, he need a change. And his change has come. Today, Lord, it doesn't matter how long our, we are in our situation. 10, 20 years, 15, 40 years. But God, you show up. When you show up, God, things will happen. Today, Lord, help us to believe. Oh, God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, my God, and we shall be saved. We shall be healed. We shall be set free. My God, we shall be delivered. So we thank you today, Lord. Bless your people, Lord Jesus. Touch the heart and the mind of your people, my God. Bring us in oneness, my God, so that, Lord, we can reap the blessings, my God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for that anointing, my God, over the congregation. Anoint your people, God. Lord, those who are not saved, my God, at the end, Lord, they will say, Lord, I am healed. I am healed. Today, God, we are praying for a transformation. We are praying for God, for your will to be done among us today, Father. Hear us, Lord, we pray. As we separate today, God, let us separate with the mind of transformation, God, that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Hear us today, we pray. Lord, consecrate us another time. Bring us at the place, Lord, Father God, we will receive from you, divine God. So today we thank you. We lift up your name. We honor you. We praise you, God. And Lord, as we speak the word today, Lord, there are death and life in the power of our tongue. And as we speak, Lord, enough is enough. Father God, we need to get out of the situation, the valley, Lord, that we are in, God. So, Lord, we speak today that, God, we need more than enough. My God, in the name of Jesus, bless us, we pray. Oh, God, Lord, we pray, oh, God, for the sick today, Lord. God, you know, Sister Nola, Father God. Lord, wherever Sister Nola is today, God, we call her to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, she needs that change today, Father. And I pray the anointing of the Holy Ghost will visit her. You said, Lord, you sent your word to heal all diseases, my God. And today, in the name of Jesus, I commit Sister Nola in your hand, God. Heal her body. Heal her wound today, God. Set her free. Allow her to rise up. My God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for healing. We lift up your name, God. 
Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Makadish, Jehovah Tiska New God. Hallelujah, Jehovah Shammai. God, we worship you today. And we give you thanks, Lord, for who you are. We thank you for healing. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for deliverance, Lord, in this house. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Can we just give God a praise? Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. If there's anyone here who has not committed your life to Jesus Christ and surrendered to him, will you just raise your hand if you want to say yes to Jesus today? You came here, you were not a saved, committed Christian, and you want to say yes to Jesus. Just raise your hand. Amen. Bless the Lord. Over to our moderator. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, brethren, I thank you all for coming today. I hope you have been blessed by the service. And I pray that as you go, you will... Um, meditate on the words that you heard today and you'll give it all to Jesus okay he's able to do what we fail to ask our thing all we've got to do is to go to him boldly and ask him for what we need okay um, our benediction today will be taken is taken from Romans 15 verse 13 may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Please remember to join us in the refreshment hall, those of us who are able to. God bless you. Pray you'll have a wonderful week. And I pray that you'll continue to experience and enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Amen.